Hello and welcome. My name is Sally Alada and I'm going to give you a short tour of Agility Health and help you understand how you can use Agility Health to measure and optimize the health and the performance of your Agile teams and how you can roll those up and uh, assess your programs, the health of your programs and your product lines and ultimately roll these up and get visibility into the health of your organization and obviously optimize it. So before we go into a lot of details, I want to explain to you why we created Agility Health. Honestly, we are Agile coaches and we have been standing up teams in various organizations and ran into the problem of how do we see across those teams and understand patterns and where can we really help. Um, we knew that a lot of teams were at different levels of maturity and we obviously from various assessments that we were doing using Excel or various survey tools, we understood that there were some common organizational issues that we needed to address, but it was so difficult to pull that information together, visualize it, make it actionable. It was very tedious. So that's basically why we created this tool is we needed it ourselves. Um, and so we also wanted to publish it and share it in the market because we know many companies that are scaling agile are probably having the same problem. So now let's go into a little bit. So I mean, I guess in a nutshell, Agility Health is a powerful agile assessment and organizational growth tool. So the, the goal is not just to assess your agile teams, but to use it as an organizational growth tool where the teams are bubbling up. Obviously at their level, they are building growth plans and getting better and improving quarter after quarter, but they are also rolling up organizational issues that they want visibility into at the program or at the product line level. And those programs and product lines can also bubble up issues and organizational impediments that they have. So ultimately, um, enterprise health is achieved when every layer, whether it's the team layer, the program level, or the portfolio are all improving, continuously improving quarter after quarter. So who does it really, who could use Agility Health and what would be the benefit to you? Well, let's start um, at the basic team member level. Team members basically could use the team health assessment um, once every quarter. Again, this is not to replace your normal iteration retrospective. This is something that you would do once a quarter. It's very strategic. Um, this team retrospective assessment takes about two and a half hours. The team comes together. So again, this is not a survey you send at their desk. Um, it really should be a facilitated session. Um, and the objective is for them to get a much deeper understanding of their performance and their health so they can grow themselves. The output is basically a growth plan. Now, if I'm a scrum master or a manager, why do I care about team health? Well, because part of my job is to remove impediments and to help the teams get better. So getting that visibility into the team's health helps you from that perspective. As an Agile coach, which we have many Agile coaches that really go into an organization, whether you're an external Agile coach or an internal Agile coach, you need to very quickly assess the health and performance of many teams um, or even at the program level and you want to develop a growth plan or a coaching backlog to understand what these teams need, what training, what coaching, what tools, what support, what impediments, and how can you find what I call the low-hanging fruit or the biggest bang for the buck improvements across those teams. And if you are an organizational leader, sometimes it could be you're part of the Agile, the Enterprise Agile um, Committee, or you are the executive sponsor. Um, part of your goal is you want to look across multiple teams, across multiple programs, and understand where are some of the organizational issues that you can jump in with and help. And how is your organization improving quarter after quarter, year after year? How are you getting better in a measurable way? A lot of people uh, transform and use agile methods to get better, but it's very hard to measure because some, so much of it is mushy. So what we hang on to are just the hard metrics, but there's more to a healthy team and a healthy organization than the hard metrics. There are also um, predictable measures and soft metrics and health metrics that are extremely important for you to see um, and watch as, as the organization grows. All right, so now let's jump into the tool so you can understand a little bit how it works. So on this front page, this is basically my team's dashboard. 
Um, I can filter the teams because some companies obviously have a lot of teams. So you can filter them by their work type. Just look at all the product line teams, the program teams, or maybe you just want to see all the software delivery teams. So for right now, let's go into um, one of my next uh, videos right after this one will be taking you through a program team and helping you understand how multiple teams can come together. But let's go into one of these teams. Let's just take our auto BAU, and obviously this would be the picture of your team, not this picture. When you go into a team, the first thing that you see is kind of what we call their assessment dashboard. The assessment dashboard helps you see all of the previous radar assessment that this team has done quarter after quarter. Um, you can also assess and look at hey, compare them to each other. I really do want to see from Q1 to Q3, how did we improve as a team and in what area? So I'm not going to go into the detail of this one, but you can basically see over here that in Q3, there has been some tremendous improvement um, in various areas of the team. So now let's go back and dig deeper into one of their team health assessments. So this is what we call the team health radar. It is broken into clarity into five dimensions. Um, a healthy agile team should have clarity on their vision, on their plan, and on their roles. And those are all broken down into these competencies. Um, a healthy agile team should show performance. And performance is measured into the confidence of the product owner, the team, and the stakeholders, the outside stakeholders around that team, but also measured into um, pr predictable velocity time to market, how fast are we delivering, um, are we measuring the value that we're delivering, are we keeping track of quality and escape defects, and are we responding to, to change appropriately. A healthy agile team should also have a strong leadership team, and I'm not going to go through the details of each element, but the leadership team is really the team facilitator, or aka scrum master, the technical lead or leads, the product owner, and the managers of that team which is a very critical part of helping the team grow. A healthy Agile team should have a healthy culture, which is obviously measured in happiness, collaboration, trust and respect, creativity, and accountability. And a healthy Agile team should have a strong foundation, and that is measured into the basic foundation of agility, which is sustainable pace, self-organization, technical excellence, having effective meetings where um, they are working sessions as opposed to discussions. And then the structure of the team is healthy. So we have the right size and skills. We're allocated well and stable. We're not shuffling around all the time. And we have the right physical or virtual environment. So what you're seeing over here, the center um, radar is a summary of the outside radar. And this is a fun view, but the real view is this detailed view. So when the team goes through their two and a half hour retrospective assessment once a quarter, this is the view that they analyze. And this tells you quite a bit. One of the things to look at over here is if there's not a lot of shading, it means that there's consensus. If there's big shading, it means that there's divergence. We don't agree on that area. So this makes for a great conversation among the team. And that is really the purpose of this tool, is to facilitate that conversation. In addition to this, you can scroll down and see some of the summaries. So what are the top five areas that we're doing really well? What are the top five areas that we are not, you know, that have the lowest score? What are the areas where we see hand to hand? We do have high consensus. And what are the top five areas where we are very divergent? The team also inputs into the survey. And by the way, it's the survey they take, again, what it's being facilitated by, by a facilitator. So they're actually doing this together. They do enter in their strengths. They enter their improvements. They put in their impediments. And the final output of this retrospective is the growth plan. The growth plan is probably the most important part because all of this is nice, um, but it needs to be actionable. So the team basically creates um, organizational issues that they want to bubble up so they can get help with or team level issues that they can um, manage and they can improve within the next quarter. And so the next step is for the items that the team can manage at their team level to be incorporated in their iteration by iteration retrospective. And we generally recommend that in every retrospective you could use, you could pull up your favorite tool that you already use to manage your retrospective items or this can become 
a retrospective tool where you start logging some of these improvements and making sure you're crossing them off and getting them done every retrospective. One of the other cool features that I'm going to show you here um, is at the very top and it's the ability to filter the responses by what we call participant groups. So if I want to see what the technical people said versus the business people and take away all, then I can begin to analyze that. And that's actually very interesting to start seeing what different groups. And you can set up any number of groups that you want to. So again, this is I want to see what the distributed people said versus the co-located. Um, and any kind of groups that you want to create as long as there's more than two or three members within a group so that it still stays anonymous. So that's it for the team health features. Next I'm going to show you in the next video the multi-team, how you can use the multi-team features to um, look at several teams, analyze common patterns, and pull up some of these organizational issues. Thanks for watching.